I'm David Shannon, and I play the Phantom in the Phantom of the Opera. The first musical I remember seeing was Pony Miss Saigon, actually. Um, that made an impression, anyway. Um, I came to see it in its first couple of weeks. It was before I even envisioned being in this business. Um, and it just absolutely blew me away. It was, really, because it was, it was spectacle as well. I just didn't understand how musicals and theatrical things could be like that. And so it was... It, it was Epic and it's 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 almost like a film. I always used to think of Miss Saigon as like a film, the way it was set and the way the scenes went into each other. So it was real left a big impression. My first phantom experience was um, I came with a friend of mine um, to see it. This is before I I I'd started in the business. It was quite early on, so nineteen, <clears throat> um, and um, I came to see it. And funnily enough. Um, a friend of who is a really close friend of mine now, a guy called Jim Graham, who's the first he was the first walking cover of Phantom, was on that night. Little did I know at the time. Um, but I just remember my friend pouring double vodkas down my throat in the interval. <laughs> That's all I can remember for. But I just remember being again, um, uh, just the spectacle of reappearances and, reappearance and sound, uh, sets just absolutely uh, astounding. And. And they do make the show something that little they, they stretch it that extra mile, which I think is yet to be um, uh, replicated by anybody else in any of the show. I really do. I think her designs have just uh, you know took this show to a completely different level. I remember just being in awe of it, of the, the lush sort of the, the, the lusciousness of everything. Um, God, that's a good question. Who's the biggest influence on my career? Ooh, um, Probably my friend who I came to see Phantom with, actually, um, who poured double vodka down my throat. We were friends for very, um, he's a, bit, a little bit older than me, and um, I used to go to his house on a Sunday, and his name's Adam Lauren, um, and I used to go to his house on a Sunday, and um, we, uh, he used to, I just used to sing with him, he used to play the piano, and I used to sing for hours, and I, I learned so much from just doing that on the Sundays, and I, I do, he's, I pay homage to him every time I talk about being, coming into this business, because I was, um, wasn't necessarily going to be in this business and um, uh, just from doing that every Sunday um, it kind of really influenced me and got me going okay I, I think I you know I can sing and I can do this and we just literally spent hours at the piano and just sing he, he'd play I'd sing you know and that was a, he's probably a very big influence in, in, in a sense of you know uh, being a big part of me getting into the business to begin with I think Ooh. Um, Gosh, I'm not very good at all that. I don't get starstruck about people, but I don't treat them with, you know, disrespect either. But um, if that's a word, disrespect. Um, I, God, I don't think of anybody that I've met who would make me starstruck. I think if I did, if there was someone I was to meet that I haven't, is a guy called John Farnham, um, who nobody in this country knows. Um, well, not nobody. That's not fair to say. But um, he had a big hit in the eighties. Um, uh, You're the voice. And he has the most incredible, incredible voice. Um, and he did, um, actually, the G Square Superstar in Australia did a concert tour of it. And it was phenomenal. But I've been a big fan of his because his voice is exceptional. And I was in Melbourne two years ago doing a concert. And um, there was hints of him maybe going. And I was really nervous because I, I was such a big fan of his. And singing in front of him would have been actually made me a little bit nervous, actually, because I said that. I thought that would be the person I think I'd ever get starstruck with. And over here, he's not very one. In Australia, everybody knows who he is. Um, and he's just a phenomenal, phenomenal talent over there and in general. So I think he'd be the person I'd get most starstruck with, I think. Ooh, keeping performances fresh is probably the challenge of musical theatre in general. Um, I, I think that's what makes, makes musical theatre uh, performers good. Um, uh, because you can go to college for three years, um, but it's never going to teach you how to do it eight times a week. Um, and that's the only thing you can learn by experience. I think it's making it fresh and new. Is, is, is Having new thoughts every night is the only way to do it. Otherwise, you will go absolutely out of your mind. Um, so having new thoughts on things, even if it's something really, really simple in how you react to a certain person or how you, you, you speak and your intonations of, of, of just trying things from a different slight point of view, I guess, every night. And I try and do that a lot. I'm a big believer in not... Uh, mechanical performances in the sense of, of, of being an automatic pilot going okay I stand here I go there I stand here I go there I sing this I do that I quite like going actually no I'm going to go over here I'm going to do that I'm going to feel like this tonight and sometimes you get it wrong in fairness you do sometimes you go out there and and, uh, and it, it doesn't work as well you know 
I mean, it, I, I, mean I, I mean, in the realms of, of, of what you're allowed to do and, and what's good for the piece, I do it. But sometimes it's not as good as it would have been in another way. But that's kind of the challenge. And I don't shortchange the audiences as well. So.